Hey there my little shadows, it's me again your master the shadow reader here today to provide you all with a new video. Now this video is going to be pretty different, I don't normally do a whole lot of discussion based videos on this channel because I've kind of given up doing those because it seems as though that every time I try making a discussion video discussing a specific topic I always manage to fuck it up entirely because either I'm completely talking out of my ass which was especially the case for that one Super Mario Logan rant video that I did back in 2018 or I just don't do it properly or I just kind of don't look into things a little bit so there's that but I think I'd make a little bit of an exception today for this video and that is regarding creepypastas now I have been a member of the creepypasta community for nearly 10 full years now I'm not kidding I have been a part of the creepypasta community for well over 10 plus years or so? I mean, I can't really recall... Hang on a second, L let me just try and think here. Oh yeah, that's right. 2013 was when I first originally got into creepypasta. So let's see, 2013, 2014, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, I'm a year short, but I've been a part of the creepypasta community for well over 9 years now. Um, I've been interested in creepypastas for a very, 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 very long time. And the first time I ever got into creepypastas was way back when I was, um, on the bus one day, and someone had told me about a little thing called Squidward Suicide, and I remember them specifically telling me about the episode in question, and I actually remember it completely. Apparently, from what the individual had told me, uh, the entire video, strictly speaking, was of... Squidward sitting there and kind of practicing clarinet or something like that. So Andrew and Patrick sit there and knock on his window, aggravate the hell out of him, and next thing you know, there's a bunch of swearing and things like that, and then next thing you know, Squidward gets, I think, a rock thrown at him by SpongeBob or S Patrick. I don't entirely remember, but I definitely know for a fact it was one, it was either one of those two, and then next thing you know, Squidward literally jumps out of a window and basically hangs himself and his head literally rips off. That's pretty much what it was in its full entirety. Now, I remember asking him to sit there and repeat the story a couple of times because I really wanted to make sure that that was the case. So one night, I have some, around that time, I think um, I had some pretty bad insomnia at the time. So I was up on my computer around four o'clock in the morning. I had like at least two hours or so to waste until I had to get up for school uh, at like six or something. So I wound up, getting on my computer, connecting to my neighbor's Wi-Fi, because we didn't have Wi-Fi at the time, uh, and looking up the story Squidward Suicide. Now, when I clicked on the one, the first link that I wound up getting was the Creepypasta Wiki version of Squidward Suicide, and I remember reading the entirety of it, and let me tell you, all of you, I was fucking scared. I am not afraid to say that that story traumatized the hell out of me. Reading the descriptions of everything that went on in that story scared me so much that for the past couple of days afterwards, I couldn't sleep. I was shaking like a fucking leaf on the bus. I, I was genuinely scared reading that story. But with that came a sudden spark and an interest for stories like these. <laughs> you, you guys want to know a funny fact? Every time I'd look up the entire video on YouTube, um, I was always afraid to sit there and click on the videos because I thought I would actually sit there and get the footage. And it took me at least a year or two to finally muster up the courage to actually watch some fan-made episodes. And now I can sit there and watch them without any kind of issues. But let me tell you, that entire situation was just, oh my freaking gosh. It was, it was something. It truly was. Uh, and then I remember getting myself into other creepy pastas like Jeff the Killer, Sonic.exe, and a couple of others. You know, the, the typical startup pastas that most people around that time, I'm sure, got into. You know, I, be I, I quickly became hooked on it. Um, and gradually over time, I expanded my desire more and more to read creepy pastas. But I will say that the idea of actually narrating pastas wasn't really an idea of mine until very late on, I think around 2014. I think when I originally first started up the channel that was, um, what exactly was the name of it? Um, I think it was called Uncle Creepypasta, I guess? I think that was the first name that I originally made that first channel. 
Uh, and then I wind up deleting that one because I don't know what the heck happened. Second time around, tried it again. I think I named myself Dinner for whatever reason. I, I don't understand. Um, tried that out, had to delete everything again. Uh, third time around, same thing. Actually, the third time I made a channel, I actually had to remove it because I was in seminary at the time and they told me if I didn't delete it, I'd have to leave. So I wound up having to delete that. And then afterwards, when I finally left seminary around 2016, well, actually, no, 2000, early 2017, I started up my channel again, which was The Shadow Reader. You know, the original first one when I was sitting there narrating uh, creepypastas and everything with my, um, with my uh, MP3 player. Like, you know, that crappy audio and everything and all that. That, that was fun. God, the, the, that was such a long time ago. But in the end, um, I got into creepypastas because of that story, and for years and years on end, I would read more and more and more and more and more of them. The, the primary genre I would really look into was many was lost episode pastas, video game pastas, and ritual pastas. And gradually over time, I got more and more deeper and deeper into other creepypasta stories and narrators, as well, like Mr. Creepypasta, Creepypasta Jr., um, some ordinary gamers when he started doing those kinds of narrations and you know so on and so forth however i'll be honest with all of you the state of creepypastas has really gone down by a lot and that's really disappointing to say i know that the genre of stories that i particularly narrate on this are very 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 subpar even my own stories i'll admit are very lackluster and crap even the ones that a lot of people really seem to like I personally can say I find a lot of issues with it and I'm actually really glad that there's been plenty of people that have been sitting there and actually giving full honest reviews about how they didn't particularly think the story was scary enough or they just thought it was kind of crap and I don't disagree with them I really hate a lot of my own creepypasta stories that I've written because if you really want to get technical with it Lost Episode Creepypastas are a very, very, very difficult genre to work with because there's not really a whole lot to really work with. I'm not saying it's an impossibility, you can certainly make something good out of it, but again, it's just very difficult to really work with and actually come up with something original. I mean, I'll even go out of my way and say with even my own stories, when I tried coming up with something new and original, it still kind of fell flat because there was one element that was lacking in many of the stories that I wrote, and that was the scare factor. There just wasn't much of a scare factor to them. But I'm getting a little bit off topic, but it still rings true. Um, but the state of creepypastas, I think, have just really started to decline more and more as the years went on. And this is especially the case with uh, many narrator, many authors and like moving on to Reddit, you know, creating r slash no sleep and looking into many of those, I'm extremely disappointed with how the genre is becoming. For one, let's get into the primary obvious issue is the clickbaity titles that many of these authors and the like have started really going into or even the narrators like Mr. Creepypasta and countless fucking others have sat there and done and started, you know, uh, incorporating story titles like, um, you know, my dog ate a dog treat and a, a skeleton popped out of his tail and then my brother got diabetes after eating a pizza pie and then this happened. You know, th this ki those kinds of, you know, things like that. And, and I get why people do this kind of thing. It generates a lot more clicks and views. I mean, if you really want to get technical with it, I can say that it's kind of clever to some extent, but really fucking awful. I mean, th think of it right now. Imagine if the classic stories that we see now, like Squidward Suicide, Dead Bart, Suicide Mouse AVI, uh, Hope is Lost, um, Jeff the Killer, countless others. I mean, even if you really want to say that they're crap or not, most of them are, I won't deny that, but imagine if those titles, instead of having the simplistic basic titles that they have now, imagine if they were the clickbaity titles that they are now. I can imagine it right now. For like Squidward Suicide, for example, I could definitely see being like, I watched an unaired episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, it changed my life, or I saw an episode of Squidward that 
completely destroyed every level of my childhood or um, I think a better title would probably be um, there was a s episode of Spongebob Squarepants that never aired this is what happened you know things like that uh, just um, imagine if the titles were that I can guarantee you that creepypastas would have already fallen down you know into complete shit ta categories but Again, that's just how the state of many pastas are now. You don't see that simplistic title anymore. You don't see the simple two, three letters title. You just get nonsense clickbait bullshit from many authors and the like in order to sit there and finally gain, you know, views. And it's no different than the things that you see on advertisements online. You know, the, you ever sit there and go on one of those, um, you know, anime websites or cartoon sites or anything and you see those ads saying like, this person has a trick and people hate him or doctors hate this guy because he found a secret to sitting there and solving um, premature baldness or whatever and it turns out that the thing actually just has nothing to do with the title itself. That's one of the biggest issues I'm seeing nowadays with, nowadays with creepypasta stories. It's just none of them are genuine anymore. They're just outright crap. And the secondary issue I can say with many creepypastas today is that the very concept of what a creepypasta originally was was, con was a concept of a copypasta. The idea of taking a story in question and copying and pasting it over and over on different websites and such. I remember way back when that was never really an issue for people. Authors never considered the idea of doing it for any kind of revenue or things like that or whatever it may seem to be but it seems that if you try and do that now oh my fucking gosh you're gonna get yourself into a lot of serious trouble with those people and god forbid you narrate any of those stories because th this has actually happened to me personally on my old channel where one of the stories the magic school bus lost episode pasta was actually uploaded to another website with a more fuller description and I remember reading it and then that video got taken down for reasons and I didn't even know that the author in question wrote that. I thought that the original story that I had listened to or read was just a cut down, watered down version that the person wind up using but that wasn't the case at all. And look, I, I want to make it clear. Every writer, every author, every body has every right to their story, and if they're not comfortable with people narrating it and like, that's a hundred percent fine. But my biggest issue now is, especially with people, you know, getting really antsy about that kind of thing, is that if you don't want your story narrated or you're not comfortable with the idea of it, please make sure of it that people know about that. I mean, but at the same time, you can't entirely expect people to sit there and really take that seriously because again many stories tend to get copied and pasted to other websites consistently and very rarely is the author's name credited or given any of that I mean if you re if you really want to go out of your way and get tentacle if something like that does happen and you're not fine with it have the page taken down that's pretty much all I can really state or contact the person which is very very difficult because a lot of people are anonymous online things like that uh, And just ultimately have the page taken down or edit it if you possibly can, you know, to provide the information that's needed. Again, however, I know this is a very touchy subject, um, so that's why I, I say that I understand it, but I do think it's also the author's, you know, responsibility as well to kind of put that on there prior beforehand so that way if people do stumble across the story and the like, you know, they'll think twice about doing something like that. But, but in all honesty, if you really want my advice, Ask for, 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 ask for permission first and foremost if it's okay to do so if you possibly can. And if for some reason you happen to find a story that doesn't have any mention of it, my best bet is to just do a simple summary of it. That's really all I can actually say is just do a summary of it, of the story, and then provide a review, which leads me to another issue. Not a lot of people really go out of their way and provide criticism, constructive criticism primarily, with many stories. And I can kind of understand why that's the case. Because a lot of people 
Okay, maybe a lot is a bit of a broad term. There are plenty of authors in light that don't really take criticism too well. I know that's not always the case, but I have ran into situations and this is a problem. You know, where you sit there and you go out and you provide criticism, and I'll admit that one time I did make that thing that the author complained about and the like um, was primarily because I was a bit too harsh, and I'm willing to admit the fact that I have been way too harsh in the reviews that I've done, which is why I will not re-upload a good chunk of the videos that I do and why I've canceled uh, things like, say, creepypasta fails, things like that, ranting about bad creepypastas, because it, it, it really just kind of didn't go along about constructive criticism. It was just me sitting there rambling on about how terrible the story was. But the issue, however, that does come with it is that even though... I was harsh in that one story, I still did what I could to try and provide criticism and like on how the story was very bland and didn't really provide anything new to the creepypasta. I don't even remember the story, but I do know that it was just pretty much generic creepypasta garbage and the like, which again is another problem. Most pastas today just rely on the same whole concept, but we'll get into that later. And I remember the author contact me, contacting me via email and like, you know, kind of bitching me out and all that. Which, again, I couldn't, I completely understood and they asked me to, and they demanded I take it down. Which I happily did, but the problem persisted when I, when I had my discussion page with this person harassing me numerous times on that discussion page saying, How dare you sit there and you say those things about my story? And then afterwards saying, my friend sat there and said, fuck you, you asshole. And I can, I can certainly admit that I was w way too harsh. And I'm willing to admit to that. But that level of just downright harassment and such that I wind up getting afterwards, even though I apologized and everything because of that situation and took the video down out of request and respect for the author of that story, I still wind up getting a shit ton of crap from that individual who kept on harassing me until I wind up getting my community tab after I hit a thousand, a thousand subscribers on my first channel. And that's another problem. Constructive criticism is a very difficult thing to give because not everybody is willing to take it or accept it. This is a very huge problem, especially now with many elements of the creepypasta community because it seems as though if you try and provide criticism to some stories out there, you're gonna get a hell of a lot of shit from authors who don't like the idea of having their story torn apart or pointed out the issues because, I mean, let's be honest here, can anybody really, can people really go out of their way and take criticism for stories nowadays? I know. Plenty of people do and the like. I'm not trying to generalize here, but it's still a bit of an issue. And not to mention the fact that copyright claims and strikes are usually a serious problem as well. And and that's another problem too, especially with modern pasta stories, is that instead of the authors going out and trying to get in contact with the narrator or whatever, um, they'll just flat out take the video down right then and there with no you know, asking or things like that, which in my opinion is kind of a scummy thing to do. I mean, yes, you may have the right to do so, but you should at least be given the common courtesy to sit there and ask for the video to be taken down and the like, and if they don't, then take matters in your own hands. In fact, that actually reminded me of a bit of a Reddit post that happened not long back about someone who went out of their way and animated the stories that they narrated, putting hours upon hours upon hours of time and effort animating every little element of it only for one person to sit there and very likely falsely a claiming, claiming to be the author of said story and then basically striking down the entire channel, taking down all that hard work and effort that the person put into and the like, which in my viewpoint is just absolutely disgusting to do. And what makes it worse is that, especially if, if the person's providing reviews or whatever on a video or a story, even though that does fall on the lines of fair use, at least how I see it personally, it just, it's disgusting in my, in my viewpoint because that person puts so much time and effort into it and when they try to get help, there just wasn't much that people could really do. The only, the most, the best advice that some people could say is get a lawyer and the like and dispute it, but 
You can't really do that. And let me tell you, people, copyright lawsuits and things like that, those that shit takes fucking years, apparently, to work with. And speaking of copyright stuff, this is another reason why I've gone out of my way and I've started drawing my thumbnails and such, because I want to try and avoid any issues with that kind of situation, especially since most of the videos I do are cartoon-based creepypastas and the like, uh, which is why I tend to draw the things that I do and kind of make sure it doesn't look too much like the characters to the best of my ability because I don't want any major company sitting there and taking it down. And yeah, that that's another issue because companies out there just like don't like the idea of it and they want to take it down. And again, another major problem with creepypastas, specifically within the cartoon creepypasta genre primarily, but it does unfortunately happen. So... My final thing that I, might, that I am going to say about the problem with most modern day pastas, and this in my viewpoint is the biggest one, is that there isn't a single creepypasta story out there right now that is even remotely memorable. I've read some of the modern pastas out there and there's not a single one of them that has actually ever stuck with me. You see, stories like Ben Drowned, Jeff the Killer, and things like that all of those stories stick out, not just because of the popularity that it had, but because the whole thing in question was very memorable and had a lasting impression on people. I mean, even though many of the stories are complete crap, we can all admit and agree that these kinds, those kinds of stories, at the very least, stuck with people and gained a cult following. Many of the stories now that I read just don't have that grasp anymore. In fact, oftentimes or not, when I'm reading it, I feel like I'm about to sit there and have a fucking snooze fest. Hell, honestly, I can I can say right now that there have been occasional times where, even though I really try and avoid videos with long ass titles, sometimes occasionally I might click on one just to sit there and help me fall asleep because there's just not a lot of love being put into it. Not to mention the fact that many stories out there, especially on r slash no sleep, are long ass Fuck. Although that's hypocritical of me to say. Playtime was over. It was literally a four hour long fucking creepypasta combined. So I can't really complain, but it, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Now, that's pretty much just the problem I have with modern creepypastas today. I know, oh, and not to mention the fact that there's a lot of pastas out there that just don't really seem very original anymore. Many of them just kind of take certain concepts and again, using cliche after cliche. And I hate saying this because I know that there are authors out there that do try and put plenty of time and effort into the stories that they make. And I'm not trying to diss anybody here, but again, if your story is going to rely on clickbait and if your story is just going to be long as all hell with a lot of filler included into it, then in my viewpoint, it's just really 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 difficult to just kind to just sit there and I don't know I just it, it's a problem people it it really honestly is I know I'm kind of rambling so I'm just gonna wrap the story up by saying this everything that I say right now is only an opinion you have every right to like any pasta that you personally enjoy that's your right to do so and I'm not telling you what you can and cannot like and as for any authors who might be upset or offended by this, again, let me stress, extremely ex stay, stress this out by, it's only my opinion. Just because I personally don't like these stories doesn't mean that I think that people shouldn't like them or things like that. It's just personal complaints that I have within the modern creepypasta community and the like. So just take what I say with a grain of salt and come to your own conclusions as you see fit. Thanks again for watching today's episode, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know it's different, but I like kind of doing these every every now and again. Thanks again for watching today's episode, my little shadow, shadows. And if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make new videos every week. And like always, roll the outro because I'm out. In fear and surprise, as your eyes widen, your mouth goes dry with each battered breath. You try to scream, your mind begs to be glued to your computer screen. The killers they slash, the tapes burn and crash. The cartridge you bought will be your final haunt. 
The rituals of hate will seal your fate. The tears you shed will be from a fear gripping portrait. Nightmarish your fill, terrorizing, hateful, burning, violent. Rage inducing, knife slashing, blood splattering, silent screams. Only time will tell if you will escape this online hell. Your horror filled obsessions will come with its own regressions. Your pathetic screams will not be heeded in any way because your nightmares will come at any time.